So this, this course is on cost conscious tolerancing of optical systems. It's, it's actually a course that's been running a different time since 2005. And it, it's an interesting uh, little course from the perspective that it it's, talks about optics and it involves optics and it's designed for different optics industries. But it's really a general engineering topic and kind of an odd one in the sense that it affects lots of different systems, but not every field deals with it differently. And, and tolerancing is its own discipline in a sense. So this course was created to take people and get them into the right frame of reference to do a good job on this. And that's what this, that's what this quote is at the bottom. It was by a colleague of mine at Kodak. And it says, although we control quality statistically, it is determined by design. You know that if you don't have a very good design, it's going to be very hard to tolerance. It's going to be very hard to apply tolerances to it and get it built. Uh, but also, you have to do a good job on this step, and this step can be critical in controlling costs. And it's not just this step. You'll see I'll talk about all throughout the design process. So tolerancing is more than just about assigning error limits. So I'm going to talk, here is a, an outline for the overall talk from foundation through fundamentals, which will be a lot of statistics. Tolerancing itself, uh, a little bit into a case study and then some concluding remarks. So very, very high level. So first we'll talk about the foundation. Uh, this, by the way, is Machu Picchu. And one, the reason why I show this slide is these were built hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they were built in such a way that they're very, very strong and robust for things like earthquakes. And so they've survived all of that time and were built by uh, people that certainly don't have the advanced technology we do now. In design and engineering, the nominal or ideal, you might hear that kind of terminology, it's essentially what you have on paper for your design. And it's almost always considered first. Nowadays, it's very common, and it certainly uh, has been common for quite some time, that you try to consider when you build something, is it going to be buildable or not? And if you don't do that step early enough, then you might run into problems. So this class not, just, not only talks about how you might assign the tolerances, but how you evaluate uh, different designs. I tend to use a lot of passive lens optical systems as examples. But that's certainly not the only area that you can apply this. So for example, in this old 35 millimeter format double gauss type of design, all we mean by nominal is that it's the on paper or perfect, perfectly built system. What variability is, is variability is anything that deviates from that ideal, that deviates from what you might have on paper. And there's a lot of different reasons for it. So here's just a simple little drawing that has some dimensioning on it. And the dimensioning, as you can see, it has a plus or minus 4 on here. It has a plus or minus 1. Those are, of course, the, the tolerances that we put on it. Now, a mechanical engineer and an optical engineer might look at this a little bit differently. Mechanical engineers, of course, you're thinking about putting things together, making sure you can put it together. But in, in optics and optical systems, it's, it's quite possible to have a mechanical design where you can put it together no problem, and it doesn't work very well or at all. So they're a little bit different. Because a mechanical system, you might uh, be able to put it together. And if it goes together well mechanically, then it will f do its purpose. And it will fulfill its purpose. But in optical systems, often we care about an optical end use. So if it's a camera, uh, even a little mobile camera or something like that, it has to actually be able to take a decent picture. So if you put it together well, but the parts aren't good enough, or it's not put together very well, or it's not tolerance very well, then it's possible that maybe you don't get good performance. So it can be part to part, assembly to assembly. So that's for a higher volume job. It might be measurement to measurement. You might make different measurements and have problems even getting the same measurement with a system. So that would be variability in your, in your metrology, your metrology method. Machine to machine, operator to, to operator. Certainly the design to what you end up building. And you may also even have in the field effects. So we had it in the lab. It worked great. We took it out into the field, whatever it is. And now it's not working. Well, it might be because the environment wasn't properly taken into account 
or it's somehow operating in a way that you didn't expect. So all of that is essentially goes back to variability means it's not acting like the ideal. So the real job of the engineer, of course, is to effectively make the system robust for this kind of variability. So there was an old saying by a professor who was at University of Rochester, Bob Hopkins, who said that you know, if you're a good designer, you're also good at this step. You're good at applying tolerances because you worry about how something has to be built. And that's really quite true. If an engineer is extremely good at, or a designer is very good at coming up with a design, but then you can't build it, then maybe the designer, and you need to build it, maybe that designer is not as good of a designer as we hoped they would be because we can't build whatever they're coming up with, even if the on-paper solution looks great.